All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Kirk. I'm a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center with Catholic University. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about heliophysics um, and specifically understanding coronal holes and what they can teach us about our sun. So if we take a picture of our sun, this is the sun in, uh, taken with the AIA instrument um, in 211 angstroms. You can see these dark patches on the sun that occur at different latitudes, at different locations, um, in the North Pole and the South Pole, and these are all called coronal holes. And what I want to talk about is what they are, uh, how coronal holes uh, affect space weather, because there's a direct cause or direct linkage, how they change over time, and then what we still have to learn about them. So what are coronal holes? What are these dark patches? Well, then initially they were defined as just that. They were dark patches in the EUV emission, so there's less emitting plasma. The sun is just less bright in those areas. But they're also a, a little bit more of a, a theoretical view of these things. Um, it has to do with magnetic fields. So there's magnetic fields coming out of the sun. And in this image, uh, you can sort of see these, these rays coming out of the sun in this, uh, in this eclipse image. And these outline the, uh, the structure of the magnetic fields. And so these open magnetic field lines, they start at the surface of the sun and go streaming out into space. These define coronal holes as well. And lastly, uh, they're defined in the lower um, particle densities outside the surface of the sun, or out, uh, far off the surface of the sun into the, into the corona. As you can see, there's the, a view of the sun on the outside here, and up, up at the top, there's very little light coming out, and that's really the, the lower admission. But how do they affect space weather? And that's really one of the key uh, research questions that we're asking at NASA and trying to understand ourselves. We know that there's a direct link between these coronal holes and space weather itself. And using the spacecraft Ulysses, which orbited in this crazy polar orbit all the way out to Saturn and then back to, to Earth again, uh, or back around the sun uh, across Earth, you can actually see that the speed of the solar wind is directly uh, related to these coronal holes. This is a, a plot here of the speed of the solar wind. I have the Earth up here uh, for to give you kind of some perspective. And the speed is slower when it's in line with the Earth versus the speed of the solar wind is quite a bit higher in the north and southern, southern holes. So that means that these coronal holes have all these magnetic topologies, but they also directly relate to the speed of the solar wind. And so the origin of the fast solar wind comes from these dark patches on the surface that we can see in our EUV images. So how do they change over time? Well, this is a plot by a, a, a colleague of mine from Chris Lauder. It's a fairly recent plot. He just put it out. And this is a, a plot of time along the um, bottom axis and then latitude on the, on the uh, y-axis. So what's happening is that each one of these bands is a strip of the sun that has been stacked up. And what the colors mean is the presence of coronal holes or not. So this is a measurement over, um, uh, over many years uh, of the missions EIT and AIA. And you can actually see that these colors kind of fade in and fade out over time. And this gives you a sense that there's actually a cycle to these coronal holes, that they're not just static. They don't appear at all times or any time, but there's actually a cycle. They kind of come in and burst, and they actually mimic the solar cycle, the solar activity cycle, but in reverse. So the polar holes are quite a bit concentrated with the solar minimum. So when there's not a whole lot of activity on the sun, we have these very stable polar holes. And then as the activity cycle ramps up, there's more flares, there's more sunspots. We see that there are more equatorial holes, and then it goes back into a cycle again. So that this magnetic cycle is uh, indicative of a, of a quiescent magnetic structure, a quiet magnetic structure that's not directly related to flares and sunspots, but you see the uh, structure itself. The work that I have been focused on in my own research and the work that um, I continue to do, have been doing for about the last decade and continue I'm working on, is specifically looking at the polar coronal holes, those caps, those dark caps on the north and the south edge of the sun, and looking to see how those evolve. Because these are the largest areas of open magnetic field line and the source for a major source for all the solar wind coming out. And so this is a plot of, of uh, years on the, um, on the x-axis on the bottom, and then fractional size of the northern and southern hole. And what I want to show you is that, that there is a cycle that you can see, and then there's these oscillations that occur, and then it sort of dies down again. And one of the interesting things that we are uh, studying is this asymmetry that you can see right here. In the northern hole, 
uh, it, in recent years, it's died down to almost nothing. The whole almost completely disappeared. There wasn't, it wasn't there. However, in the South, it disappeared briefly and then came back again in a major way. So this has represented a major asymmetry, not just in the structure of the holes, but in the magnetic field of the sun. The magnetic dipole of the sun was not nearly as strong, which means that, that the, the sun is not structured like a bar magnet anymore. It's, it's a more complicated magnetic measurement. So what does that mean? So the further questions that we need to understand about coronal holes is, we need to understand what it exactly means to have open magnetic field lines, field lines starting at the surface of the sun and stretching off into space. How do those form the dark patches on the sun themselves? What is the physical link between the two? We need to quantify it as well. Do our larger coronal holes mean faster solar wind? Does darker uh, plasma mean fa uh, like less emitting plasma? Does that mean faster wind or, or uh, more particle density? What exactly are the physical relations between the dark patches and the magnetic fields? But First of all, we also need to understand exactly where they're located. The edges of coronal holes are like clouds. It's, it's easy to tell when you're in a hole and when you're not, but where exactly that line, that boundary layer between the quiet sun and the coronal hole is, is still an open question and it's still an active investigation. So through all of this, by looking at coronal holes, we can gain really key information in understanding our sun and the solar cycle and how they all relate together. So thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer a question or two. And um, if uh, you'd like to talk more in depth, I spent about a decade looking at these things. So I, I know a, a thing or two maybe.